In the early 1980s, you could have a home computer with two processors. Back then, it seemed like the cutting edge in computing, but that's exactly what Acorn designed into its BBC microcomputer system. Now, for reasonable money, I have an example of that 8-bit second processor system. So hold tight, because it's about to get nerdy. This is my BBC Model B from the early 80s, an 8-bit legend in the UK. And this is a cardboard box also from the early 80s. And inside that box we have an Acorn 6502 second processor, lovingly known as a cheese wedge. I bought this one for about half what you might expect to pay for a perfect example. It has an original user manual and the cover accurately depicts the typical 1980s computer scientist's office. Note the huge monitor with a tiny screen, the Rubik's Cube, the Music Center, and the fancy push-button telephone. Back to today, and we have the all-important Acorn DNFS ROM. But no high basic ROM, which is disappointing, but isn't essential. First thing I need to do is open up my BBC Micro and move the keyboard to get to the ROM sockets. This one on the right currently has the standard disk filing system ROM that I need to replace with the DNFS ROM. If you're of a nervous disposition, look away now because I'm what's known as CAC handed. But I do manage to remove the ROM without too much damage to it, the circuit board or me. And the DNFS ROM fits in with a reassuring crunching sound. The computer starts up, which is good. So because I've been meddling with filing system ROMs, I'd like to check I can still load from disk. It's making all the right noises, and after a couple of seconds I've got Palace of Magic, one of my favourite Aeglesoft games, up and running. So far, so good. Now it's time to attach the second processor unit. Acorn kindly supplied this not very long cable to plug into this quite fiddly connector. And I found it quite tricky to do. Once connected up, it's all quite neat, but you can quite clearly see how yellowed the cheese wedge is compared to my BBC and disk drive. But it starts up straight away, and we can see achieved 6502 prompt and the promise of 64K rather than the standard 32K. The star help command shows some tube related info too, so that's all looking good. With the second processor, you don't get to run your code concurrently on both processors. Instead, the BBC becomes an I.O. processor, handling screen, keyboard and filing systems. Your code runs on the second processor, and that communicates with the I.O. processor via the tube interface. The tube is implemented as four two-way first-in-first-out buffers for console, error handling, data transfer and system calls. This allows the BBC to connect to a whole range of external processors. With all this technology, the obvious thing to do is play Elite, because there's a 6502 second processor version. On the right is the standard BBC version, which loads quicker because there's less of it. The second processor version clearly uses more colours in the control panel. And once up and running, we can see it renders faster and has more colourful graphics. There are two big advantages to using this system over a standard BBC Micro. One, the processor runs at 3 MHz rather than the 2 MHz of a standard machine. And two, you get more memory and it doesn't matter what screen mode you use, which is a big deal on the BBC, as we'll see. First, let's look at speed. 
I'm going to use my SD card filing system because I've got some useful programs ready. The first one draws a recursive tree. You may have seen this in one of my other videos, but this one grows up rather than sideways, like an actual tree. Here's the code. We'll run in mode 0, a 20k high resolution mode. And on a standard BBC Model B, it takes just less than 9 seconds to complete. Now if we start the second processor and load the same program, and again run it in mode 0, it renders noticeably quicker and completes in under 6 seconds. If we do some quick sums we can see it works out as 56% faster. Now let's look at memory. The I.O. processor has a similar memory map to a normal BBC, with the top 32K taken by operating system and basic ROMs, and screen memory taking a big chunk of RAM, leaving what would be a small space for basic programs. In fact, on a standalone BBC, there's slightly less space than this. On the second processor, the basic ROM is copied into the same location as the BBC Micro, but because it doesn't worry about screen memory, you get all the 30K space below for basic programs. And there's 14K above the basic ROM for assembly language or data storage, if you have high basic then the ROM is copied to the top of free memory and you get a slightly improved version of basic. That leaves a nice continuous 44k for basic programs and data. So what about that high basic ROM I was missing? Well here I have one shipped all the way from the other side of the world. And here is a nice empty ROM socket just waiting for it. The ROM fits in snugly and looks good to go. Unfortunately, it doesn't want to work. We just get a continuous second beep at startup, and although there is a flashing cursor, we have no basic prompt and the machine is unresponsive. I tried cleaning the pins and the socket, and I reseated it a couple of times, but it just wouldn't work, so in the end, I got cross and gave up. Even without high basic, I still get a big lump of memory for programs and can use any screen mode without impact. And if I want to use the 14k above basic, I still can. If I wanted to just load assembly language, I could even unload the basic ROM to get an extra 16k. Back on a standard BBC B, let's see what this means in real terms. If I go into mode 0 and then try to allocate memory for an array of integers, I can have 1300 no problem. But if I try to allocate 1400, I run out of memory. Now I'll start up the second processor and go into mode 0. This time I can allocate 1400 integers. In fact I can allocate space for 7500, which is a lot more. But much more than that and I run out of memory. Using some rough maths, it looks like I can have nearly six times as many integers using the second processor and standard BASIC in mode 0. And if we do the same maths using what the memory map tells us, that confirms our estimate and shows just how much difference the screen memory can make. So what about that 14k above BASIC? Well, we could use it for machine code, or we could use it to store data used by a BASIC program. This program writes 104 byte integers into that memory and then retrieves them and prints them on the screen. Now I've calmed down about the high basic ROM kerfuffle, I've done something unthinkable and read the manual, actually read it with my eyes and my brain. And I've learned that the order of the ROMs is important. With filing systems and languages, the priority goes right to left. So because high basic won't work on a standalone BBC, I need to have the standard basic ROM to the right of the high basic. Simple when you know. Now I can start my BBC in standard mode and select high basic with a simple command. And as it turns out, I don't even need the ROM to use high basic. First of all, I just want to get the high mem location using standard basic. It's at 32k or 8000 hex. Now I'm going to go to a drive on my SD card where I've got a high basic ROM image sourced from the internet. I need to unload basic. 
you notice I go back to the operating system star prompt. I just load and run the ROM image from disk and now we get the basic prompt back. Printing high mem now confirms we've increased the basic memory ceiling by 14k. We can still allocate an array of 7500 integers as before. But now we can go up to 10,000 or even more. If you like integers, this is the way to go. I got this 6502 second processor for a relatively low price. And it's a bit yellow but otherwise in good condition with polys and a box. It came with the DNFS ROM and a pristine user guide. It didn't have the high basic ROM but I did source one and eventually got it to work. Also you can load high basic from disk. Acorn are a bit mean with the cable and I found it fiddly to connect but once set up it works very well. If you like playing Elite it runs smoothly on a second processor. But most games can't use it so for retro gamers there's little benefit. However if you're an 80s style computer scientist like these crazy cats, well what do you guys think? Yeah they love it and quite rightly too. Now get back to work you lazy buggers. I've had a lot of fun playing with this second processor. I could never have justified buying one as a teenager and probably should have been thinking about other things. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please like and subscribe.